let's get going. So, uh, welcome to the last class. Uh, today we're going to wrap up uh, data log and move on to basically a whirlwind review of, uh, or enumeration perhaps, of all of the subjects that we've covered so far. Uh, most of the purpose of this class is to identify where there are areas that there is uncertainty. So um, basically I'm going to enumerate a bunch of topics and I'm going to kind of rely on you to ask questions about those topics where there is uncertainty. Um, so please speak up if, if there's any sort of questions. Uh, otherwise we're basically not going to get much out of this. Um, okay, but first uh, let me wrap up with data log. Um, just to recap, uh, SQL 92, uh, uh, SQL 99 added a uh, clause called with recursive, uh, which allows you to define uh, essentially views using transitive closure. Uh, so the, the view that you de define using with recursive uh, is essentially defined in terms of itself, or can be defined in terms of itself, uh, which allows you to do all sorts of funky computations uh, such as uh, follow paths, go through hierarchies and that sort of thing. Um, a, a particularly uh, important class of, of queries basically require this. And so uh, in order to reason about it, we need to, we need to be able to have some formal uh, structure to this, this with recursive clause. Uh, rather than trying to discuss it on SQL, which has all sorts of weird nuances and, and uh, messiness, uh, we, we started talking about this in terms of data log which is a variant of prolog that allows you to do various forms of uh, computation recursively. Uh, a data log program consists of a set of rules, and each rule um, consists of a head and a body. Um, the body, uh, you can treat the body as sort of the if clause of an if statement. Um, if all of the conditions are true, then uh, the, the term defined by the head is also true. And in this case, truth uh, means that there is a tuple present that satisfies all of the restrictions. Um, you'll note that there are a couple of variables. Each variable has to be, uh, every variable has to be assigned the same value. Uh, we talked about this idea of safety, uh, namely that uh, every single attribute in the, uh, in the uh, so every single variable has to be bound to a specific relation uh, in, in the body of a uh, data log rule. So in this case, if we have uh, a rule that has this uh, unbound clause opinion, um, then there is effectively an infinite number of, there are an infinite number of tuples uh, in the head term uh, that satisfy that particular uh, predicate, because literally anything can be an opinion uh, any, if you assign any value to opinion here, um, then that is a valid tuple. Uh, so because of that, we, we, refer to, um, we refer to this rule as uh, unsafe. And in particular, we refer to the uh, opinion variable as not range restricted. So uh, basically in any sort of data log or recursive uh, query, uh, we want to have some sort of uh, notion of which variables are uh, range restricted. Okay, uh, so what we left off with was this idea of negation, um, and in particular, uh, the fact that negation leads to a number of uh, weird uh, conditions. So, uh, for example, I have this program here, uh, which consists, which defines uh, hams in terms of officers uh, of rank four who are not stoics, and I define stoics in terms of officers uh, who are just flat out not large hams. Uh, so, quick question for you, uh, is Spock, who is a rank 3, uh, a large ham or a, the Stoic? If Spock is an officer, uh, would Spock go into the Stoic relation or the ham relation? Stoic. stoic. Why? Because ham, okay, so there's no way that Spock can be a ham, which forces, um, because of the restriction on rank, and so he must be a uh, Stoic. Uh, is Kirk, on the other hand, uh, a large ham or a the Stoic? Hmm? You can't say, exactly. Uh, Kirk could just as easily be a the ham or a 
the sto large hem or a the stoic. Uh, in other words, this program has two fixed points, two valid uh, fixed points. And um, as a consequence of that, there's no clear answer. There's no... Um, the, the query, this, this particular program, uh, this query is meaningless because there are two possible outcomes. Uh, Sorry? Um, I could not, I actually am not sufficiently familiar with Prolog to answer that. Um, it has two fixed points because uh, it is equally valid for Kirk to be a large ham or a the stoic. If Kirk is a large ham, that is a valid output. How does that give two fixed points? So the fixed point in this case is defined. The value that the the fixed point operator is is operating over uh, is the contents of these two relations. Now, uh, the right. Uh, so in this case, the the fixed point operation is basically going to involve adding. Uh, a tuple to uh, one or both of these relations. So we talked about um, evaluating expressions through through the fixed point operator by basically adding tuples. Um, so we can rework uh, we can rework this in terms of okay. So let's say we start with um, let's say our evaluation strategy is to first compute a new set of um, tuples to add to the ham relation, and a new set of tuples to add to the, the stoic relation. Does that work, if we do it all at once? So let's, uh, in that particular case, uh, we would look at the body. Kirk is an officer. Kirk has rank four. And at that particular point, Kirk is not a stoic. So we can add Kirk to the ham relation. Similarly, Kirk is an officer, and at that point, Kirk is not a ham. So if we evaluate both rules in parallel, we add Kirk to both relations. Now, of course, Kirk is all of a sudden a ham, so it no longer satisfies that predicate. Kirk is now a, no, uh, now a stoic, so he no longer satisfies that predicate. So if, once again, we evaluate all of the rules in parallel, we end up with uh, Kirk in neither of those relations and we end up cycling between those. Now we can take an alternate evaluation strategy where we treat, um, where we evaluate one rule at a time. So let's say we evaluate the first rule, and then the second rule, and so forth. Kirk is an officer, Kirk is rank four, Kirk is not a stoic. Great, we add Kirk to the ham relation. Now we evaluate the stoic relation. Well, okay, Kirk is an officer, but he is a ham, so so no, that's, that's no longer a fixed point. Um, so now we, we reach a fixed point where Kirk is a hem and not a stoic. But we could just as easily take an evaluation strategy where uh, we evaluate the, the stoic rule first and then evaluate the ham rule. So we end up with Kirk being an officer. Kirk is not a ham, so Kirk is a stoic. Kirk is an officer, Kirk is rank four, but Kirk is a stoic, so Kirk is not a ham. So that is, uh, the, the outcome of that is that Kirk is a stoic, but not a ham. So basically, de depending on how we perform the evaluation, uh, we could end up with two completely different fixed points. Uh, one where Kirk is a ham, but not a stoic. One where Kirk is a stoic, but not a ham. Or if we evaluate all of the rules in parallel, we end up uh, jumping back and forth between a situation where Kirk is a ham and Kirk is a stoic. And so we want to essentially avoid this, this particular kind of situation. We want to make sure that the data log program is structured in such a way that that kind of, of uh, cycle, that kind of recursion, uh, can never happen. Now, now the, uh, the sort of trivial way of doing that would be to simply eliminate recursion. But that's, we don't want to do that because well, the entire point of the entire point of this is to have recursion. Negation is the is the other problem that uh, introduced this. So we could just get rid of negation as well. But once again, that reduces the power uh, of data log, and uh, in this case, it actually re actually reduces it unnecessarily. And so one particular strategy for for dealing with uh, negation is something called stratification. 
Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna say that table R, or relation R, depends on relation S, uh, if R is in the head of a rule with S in the body. And I'm gonna make that definition a little more explicit. Uh, I'm gonna say that R depends negatively on S, if S has, or if there's a not S in the body. So now I have two, two different terms, depends on and depends negatively on. And we're going to take all of the tables in our relation, and we're going to build them uh, into layers, uh, also known as strata. So we're going to start with uh, stratum 0. And we're going to say this, this uh, stratum has all of the tables that have no dependencies whatsoever. We're going to build up stratum 1 relative to stratum 0 by saying that stratum 1 has all of the tables that either depend on depend positively on another table in stratum 1, or stratum 0, um, or uh, a, the table depends negatively on uh, a, a table in stratum 0. So the distinction here is, is basically that um, stratum, there can be negative dependent, uh, there can be positive dependencies within stratum 1, but any negative dependencies have to go to stratum 0. And similarly, two, uh, stratum 2 is going to have positive dependencies on anything in stratum 2 or above, and negative dependencies on anything in stratum 1 or above. Um, right. So this actually leads to a very nice evaluation strategy, because we can first evaluate all of the, the rules uh, for, well, there are no rules in stratum 0. We have all of these rules defined already. Uh, we can then evaluate all of the rules uh, for tables in stratum 1. And we're guaranteed not to have any of these, these weird cycles between large ham and, and so forth, uh, because all of the, the negative dependencies are on tables in stratum 0. So this is something we can evaluate, uh, and every time we, uh, we compute another step of the fixed point, uh, we're always adding new stuff. We're always adding new, new tables. We can never delete a new. Uh, we can never delete a row because um, the only negative dependencies are on something that's already been uh, completely, completely determined. And similarly, when we then move on to stratum two, the only negative dependencies are on uh, tables in stratum one, so we never have to delete anything. And so a stratum uh, basically, we're going to call this uh, sort of. A program that is that can be subdivided in this way, uh, we're going to refer to as a stratified program. Uh, so, is uh, is a large ham slash the stoic uh, a stratified program, or can can you uh, can you put the two? There are three relations there: officer, um, ham, and stoic. Can we put all? Uh, is there a way to put all of those into uh, into strata? Okay, what would that way be? The lowest pair would be having all the relations. Stratum zero? Um, does large ham slash stoic depend on something? Does it? In fact, I'll go back. Uh, so, uh, what was our de definition of, of dependency? <coughs> what was our definition of dependency? Okay, so depend. A dependency occurs whenever you have a table. Uh, a table in the head of a rule depends on all of the tables in the body of the rule. And it depends negatively on any table uh, with a not in front of it in the body. So in this case, uh, can we, uh, what, would, what would be in stratum zero? Officer. Officer, exactly. So officer doesn't depend on anything. Now, let's forget about the stoic rule for the moment. Where would we put the, uh, the ham rule? Uh, sorry, the ham relation. The second or uh, stratum one? Yeah. So ham could go in stratum one because it depends negatively on the stoic, which we're ignoring for now. Now, where would the stoic go? Two. It would have to go in two, but now we have this dependency so this, we've, we've basically broken our, our uh, uh, we have this dependency from 
uh, Ham to, uh, to Stoic, as well as from Stoic to Ham. So basically this, this particular program can't be, uh, repre can't be stratified. Um, right, and basically whenever you, uh, this, the same kind of principle is going to apply in um, whenever you write a with recursive query. Uh, anytime you have sort of a negative dependency, it's going to basically exclude those particular uh, queries. It's going to just crash, and basically if, if you ever encounter that, this is, this is pretty much why. Um, you want to always make sure that the that tuples are being added uh, when you're evaluating a recursive query, because otherwise you end up with the potential uh, for infinite loops. Yes. Uh, so basically, when we're evaluating stoic of O, uh, would it go to not have a movement try to evaluate ham of O and then decide that this is ham and so we'll say it's not stoic? Well, that's the thing. Um, the Okay, you can think of this as, uh, so when you evaluate Stoic, you need to know what Ham is. But when you evaluate Ham, you need to know what Stoic is. But when you evaluate Stoic, so forth, and, and you get in, into an event, uh, it, uh, an infinite loop. Uh, so if you want to evaluate the entire thing top down, that's, that's what would happen. Uh, and a bottom-up strategy would sim uh, similarly lead to uh, an infinite loop because you can never, well, either an infinite loop or an incorrect answer. Yes? If there was no stoic, there was only what would be in straight and uh, If there was no stoic, uh, but there was ham. Okay, so get rid of this rule and that term. Uh, then strat of zero would just be officer. Because ham depend, uh, so once again, our rules. Uh, stratum zero has everything with no dependencies whatsoever, and stratum one has everything with dependencies within stratum one. So basically, our evaluation is going to start at stratum one because stratum zero is already complete. Okay. Uh, now, does this? Does this ensure a uh, a single fixed point? If if we have a stratified program, are we guaranteed to have a uh, a single fixed point? Maybe. Maybe. Well, okay. So how would how would we evaluate one of these? So this is already evaluated. We're done. There's there's no variation that can happen here because there's no dependencies. Now we evaluate this. Uh, let's say there are only dependencies within stratum one. Uh, would that lead to multiple fixed points? Yes. yes why? Well, in this case, uh, in this case, there's negative dependencies. So, what if we only had positive dependencies? Okay, so basically, if, if you only have positive dependencies, then there's, you're always adding tuples. So if the, if the fixed point is finite, if you ever stop adding tuples, then there's only one place you can stop. Um, and as, as we talked about with this idea of the least fixed point, least model, um, for a positive program, you, you actually do end up with a single fixed point. So if, if the program is po entirely positive, we're, we're set. What about the negatives? Hmm? It may or may not, but in this case, with this restriction that the negative dependencies are always on stratum zero, does that save us? Yes. yes. Why? Zero is Exactly. So stratum zero is already evaluated, and then um, these negative dependencies, you can basically sort of invert them into positive dependencies. You're never going to delete anything from stratum zero, so uh, you, you can basically treat those as sort of a fixed set of these tuples are satisfied. Okay, um, great. So basically that's... Um, 
Unfortunately, we don't, we don't have enough time to go into magic sets. Uh, I encourage you to read that section of the book. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's really a sort of a, a weird, trippy way of rewriting programs to evaluate them more efficiently when uh, selection predicates are present. Um, unfortunately, we don't have enough time to cover it. So instead, um, are there any final questions on data log? If not, um, let's launch into a whirlwind tour of the term. So I'm going to basically just go through these lists, uh, go through kind of the, the, the list of things. Uh, give me a shout, yell, uh, somehow get my attention if there is something that you have a question about. So, <coughs> yes? What? What is, what of this will be covered in the final? Um, so you're responsible for all of this knowledge. Um, I will focus on content that was not, that ha I will focus the midterm, uh, the, the final on, um, excuse me, uh, content that was covered after the midterm, but all of it is, is fair game. Uh, it is 30 or 25, depending on whether or not, uh, if it is beneficial to you, it is 30 points. <laughs> Basically, whichever, whichever, no, it's, uh, it's specifically, um, if your final grade is higher than the midterm grade, it'll count for more. If basically, if, if you've improved over the course of the term, uh, it, it will it will count for more. Sorry. Uh, yes, it, it is. It is different for whoever. Basically, anyone who has uh, anyone who does better on the final than the midterm will have the final counted for thirty percent. Is that clear? Okay. All right, so starting from the very beginning, whirlwind, uh, relational algebra. We started out with a set of basic operators, selection, projection, Cartesian cross, uh, join, and division. Um, these, operator, these operators are uh, compositional, and they're also operational in that they express a evaluation strategy, which is unlike SQL, which they're, however, equivalent to. Uh, you are responsible for understanding that a query can be expressed in many different ways, and in particular, uh, that there are a number of rewrite rules that allow you to uh, transform one query into another query that uh, evaluates the same thing. You're responsible for knowing uh, those rewrite rules. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll get to cost in a moment. Uh, we talked about storage. You are responsible for knowing basically how uh, disks work. You're responsible for knowing how uh, trans how latency and bandwidth end up getting computed. Uh, Trade-offs between flash, hard disk, and in-memory uh, storage. Uh, you're responsible for understanding how data is laid out, either on a disk, on a page, in a record. Uh, you're responsible for understanding RAID. Uh, we talked about external algorithms, how to uh, utilize different uh, layers of the memory hierarchy when designing your data processing algorithms. Uh, in particular, we talked about pipelining and various, uh, al various algorithms that employ pipelining wherever possible, or uh, equivalent or uh, slightly worse than, uh, than pipelining, uh, try and keep a relatively small or bounded size working set. Uh, you're responsible for understanding uh, which operations can be pipelined and why, and what sort of limitations there are on that pipelining. Uh, in particular, I'm thinking of join algorithms here. Um, you're responsible for external algorithms for group by aggregates, uh, joins, including uh, hash join, sort merge join. Uh, you're responsible for external sort and the replacement sort mechanism, uh, the, the replacement sort extension to external sort. Uh, and just a general uh, understanding of uh, be prepared to uh, work with different levels of the memory hierarchy. 
You're responsible for knowing a range of indexing strategies. We talked about ISAM and hash indexes. We also talked about dynamic indexes, um, specifically extendable hashing, linear hashing, and consistent hashing. Um, and in particular here, you're responsible for uh, understanding which of these uh, index strategies, uh, having multiple indices, uh, even having just the regular file, uh, how do you pick the appropriate access path? Uh, you are responsible for understanding how data gets inserted into or removed from B plus tree, uh, from uh, the various uh, hashing and uh, tree structured in index uh, data structures, and uh, how these interact with, again, multiple levels of the fire of the file part, multiple levels of the memory hierarchy. Cost estimation. Um, in particular, uh, we talked about various ways of computing uh, the reduction factor of different um, queries as a whole, uh, given the reduction factor of individual uh, operations. Uh, we talked about given um, given row sizes, selectivity, and reduction factor. How one might uh, compute I/O costs and CPU costs of a given uh, expression. Um, we briefly touched on memory costs as well. Um, and finally, we talked about estimating uh, how what the selectivity of a pre predicate is uh, given histograms and. We also talked about a couple of sketches towards the end of the term that are applicable to this purpose as well. We talked about optimization, uh, in particular different ways of representing plans that, that are amenable to optimization, uh, pipeline plans, left deep plans. Um, we talked about relational al algebra rewrite rules and in particular how these rules can be used both heuristically and as part of a cost-based optimizer uh, to pick a query evaluation plan. Uh, we talked about different ways of picking access paths uh, and different uh, access paths uh, that interact with the indexing strategies that we talked about, index nested loop, and so forth. And we also talked briefly about uh, how different constraints can play into, um, can play into the, uh, the optimization strategy. We talked about data modeling, uh, in particular the uh, entity relationship model uh, and the various kinds of constraints that get expressed through the entity relationship model. Uh, we talked about um, different kinds of entities, uh, weak entities and uh, aggregate entities. Um, we also talked about how ER, the ER model connects to SQL and how these constraints can be applied uh, to a traditional uh, SQL database. Uh, as well as how those end up getting enforced. When talking about transactions, we talked about uh, the atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability guarantees, also known as ACID, uh, as well as how you can build up a transaction schedule, uh, how you can get a equivalence between two schedules, uh, and we talked about two specific kinds of, uh, of equivalence that are practical for, for uh, talking about transactions, namely conflict and view, uh, co conflict and view equivalents. Uh, we talked about dependency graphs and how uh, those get built up for transactions, and we talked about a variety of enforcement strategies, uh, namely lock-based concurrency control, uh, which in uh, part requires us to uh, have strategies for avoiding deadlock, as well as strategies for um, dealing with very large uh, data sets, uh, such as, for example, hierarchical locking. Uh, we talked about um, optimistic concurrency control, and uh, the main points of interest here are uh, the validation algorithms. So what are the validation algorithms, and why are they relevant? Uh, why are they correct and appropriate? Um, we talked about timestamp concurrency control, and with respect to timestamp concurrency control, uh, we talked about uh, how, um, what kind of additional data needs to be stored and how, those, how that additional data gets used uh, to validate uh, reads and writes on the transactions uh, 
performed by the transactions uh, trying to modify the data. Uh, we talked about ignoring out-of-date writes. Uh, the book refers to this as the Thomas Wright rule. Uh, and we talked about uh, versioned databases, which allow us to uh, have a little more flexibility with respect to timestamp enforcement. Uh, all right, so having transactions below our belt, we talked about uh, recovery and how a uh, transaction ends up actually getting committed, uh, basically what kind of steps we can take to ensure durability of the transaction. And we talked about various strategies for um, handling aborts as well as handling crashes uh, using this idea of write-ahead logging. Um, in particular, we talked about the Aries algorithm, uh, which gives us the ability to undo and redo operations performed on the database uh, in a way that is resilient to crashes, uh, both during the recovery process and uh, during the uh, both during the the um, undo and redo process, as well as during the crash recovery process. Uh, and in particular, uh, how checkpointing is a important part of right ahead logging. Uh, from there, we moved on to parallel databases, which uh, we started off by discussing the various types of parallelism, uh, how you could break a, an operation up into uh, sequential parallelism, as well as uh, partition parallelism, um, how these, these different types of parallelism integrate, uh, interact with relational algebra, relational algebra, and how different relational algebra operations uh, can be uh, partitioned in different ways. In particular, I'm looking at uh, the sort, join, and aggregate operations. Uh, those are probably the most complex uh, mechanisms to parallelize. Uh, we talked about different structures for the database, uh, for a parallel database. Uh, we talked about shared memory, we talked about shared disk, and shared nothing. Um, expect you to know what the differences between those are and what the trade-offs between those various strategies are. And we talked about different partitioning strategies. So how do you take all of your data and split it up uh, among the various uh, bits of computation that need to be performed? And we talked a little bit about uh, various strategies for optimizing uh, queries in a parallel setting. Uh, was there a question? Uh, all right. Um, we talked about distributed transactions, and one of the big things here was bloom joins. I expect you to know uh, what a bloom join is and how to perform it. Uh, we talked about uh, how, in a distributed setting, what kind of uh, steps we need to take to provide uh, the ACID guarantees, and in particular, uh, isolation durability and consistency are the, the big challenges. Um, one of the strategies that we used for that was locking. And in any locking lock-based setting, you need some sort of way of detecting deadlock. Um, so we talked about a couple of ways of uh, performing uh, deadlock detection in a distributed setting. Uh, we talked about uh, the two-phase commit protocol, and we talked about recovery in a distributed setting. In particular, the fact that a node, uh, one of the several nodes participating in the computation, uh, might fail independently of the others. Uh, and the, the sort of new type of, of failure model where a node is simply disconnected from the rest of the computation. Okay, uh, we talked about data warehousing. In particular, the, um, we talked about uh, MOLAP versus ROLAP, different ways of representing data in a data warehouse. Uh, we talked about data cubes, and in particular, the cube operator. And we talked about sequence analysis, in particular the window operator. Uh, the main two points of interest here are cube and window. Uh, from there we moved on to uh, various ways of performing approximate computations over extremely, lar extremely large data sets. And in particular we talked about sketches. Uh, we revisited bloom filters and we talked about two specific kinds of sketches, uh, namely count distinct and the regular count sketch. Uh, we talked about. We also talked about uh, online aggregation strategies, in particular, um, how you can sample from the data. Uh, we talked about a new kind of join, the ripple join, and we talked about uh, a new uh, strategy for for um, sampling from an index, 
called index striding. After that, we moved on to stream processing. In particular, uh, this kind of combined a whole bunch of ideas. Uh, we started with window joins. And in particular, the, the interesting bit here was uh, implementing hash joins. And there, the, the big challenge was, how do you effic uh, efficiently invalidate tuples? Uh, pull them out of the, the uh, how do you build an index structure over one of your windows? And how do you sort of delete stuff efficiently from that, uh, from that data structure? Uh, we talked about um, how views can be materialized, and we talked about how those materialized views can then be um, updated with respect to new data, uh, in particular through this idea of delta queries. We talked about column stores. Uh, we talked about how uh, they differ from row stores, uh, in particular their, how data is laid out in a column store, and what kind of optimizations that layout strategy brings us. Um, in particular, things like sorting the data, things like uh, compressing the data, uh, like run length encoding. Uh, we talked about how uh, query processing on a column store differs uh, from everything else, uh, in particular the importance of set intersections in a column store. And finally, we talked about database tracking, uh, how you can sort of uh, use the, the query processing uh, pipeline to reduce the, the, the upfront cost of uh, loading your data into the database uh, by sort of sorting it as you go uh, while evaluating the query. And finally, uh, we, well, almost next to finally, uh, we talked about how, we talked about some more theoretical concepts, in particular, uh, how, what are some good strategies for uh, encoding schemas, and in particular, how to identify and eliminate redundancy in your schemas uh, using uh, these ideas called functional, these constraints, uh, data constraints called functional dependencies. We talked about how a database or uh, a human user might look at a set of, um, excuse me, might look at a set of uh, a particular database schema and uh, eliminate redundancy by reducing it to one of the uh, normal forms. And in particular, we talked about two specific types of normal forms, uh, voice cod normal form and third normal form. Um, so you're responsible for these, uh, knowing what the definition is and how you decompose uh, data into one of them. Uh, we also talked uh, very briefly about this idea of minimal cover and how that could be used uh, to reduce a set of functional dependencies uh, to a, a minimal representation of those same functional dependencies uh, that would allow us to guarantee that we could reduce a schema into third normal form. And finally, we talked about uh, data log and recursion, uh, in particular, uh, fixed uh, different ways of representing a data log program, uh, different ways of, evalu of uh, thinking about the evaluation strategy, uh, namely fixed points and models, and we talked about uh, what it means for a model or a fixed point to be the least uh, fixed point or model. Uh, we talked about uh, variable and rule safety, namely range restrictions. Uh, we talked about negation, uh, stratification, and uh, when, negate, when we can detect that a program is uh, free from problems that arise due to negation. Okay, 20 minutes. Entire term in 20 minutes. Um, so basically, this this is more or less the the grab bag that I am going to be looking at when uh, building the exam. Uh, so that's more basically. Are there any questions on this? Okay, well, um, thank you for attending. Um, one, oh, uh, sorry, uh, one more slide. Uh, uh, one second.
uh, three images. Right. So, uh, the format of the final, uh, it is a three-hour exam. You will probably not need the entire three hours. Uh, it is closed book, but you are allowed to bring uh, one eight and a half by eleven sheet of notes. Uh, you will not need a you will not need a calculator. You will not need any sort of additional uh, implements except for a pen. Yes. Um, look at the homeworks. Um, look at the review questions and. Uh, And I will, by, by Wednesday evening, have a, a couple of example questions posted. Yes? 